Welcome to our Lunchtime Live program on WJEJ. It's a partnership with Washington County Public Schools. That's us. I'm Will Kaufman from the Public Information Office. Our Lunchtime Live program is on the third Thursday each month, and today's show is sponsored by Blackboard uh, on a mission to reimagine education. And we thank them for their sponsorship. Uh, and we certainly thank all of you for listening this afternoon, or if you're hearing it uh, uh, as a recording after the fact, we thank you for uh, checking in uh, with that availability, too. We have two newcomers here. We're going to break into the show, uh, and we believe certainly worthy and um, uh, topics that we haven't covered at all in any depth whatsoever. So it's going to be a fun half hour. Uh, we welcome Don Custer, who is the uh, coach and mentor of the robotics team at South Hagerstown High School, and Amber Patterson, uh, is handling the virtual high school project here in Washington County Public Schools. So a couple of new twists and turns for us this afternoon. Don, we'll start with you. What is robotics, first of all? What does that mean? Uh, well, robotics is basically taking inanimate objects and making it move. Uh, we start with uh, basic pieces of metal, motors, gears, whatnot, and have a plan or a goal in mind and we try to make that goal happen so so the point of having a robotics team is, is twofold ultimately a team is is competitive i mean mm -hmm. you you know you're involved in competitions what's the day-to-day -day like though i mean what what's what's the point of the day-to-day -day? it's not just practice mm -hmm. right i mean it's right. about teaching these kids some skills and and some other things i'm sure well day-to-day -day, uh, the kids meet a couple of times a week okay um, sometimes even on Saturdays, uh, they come in and they learn how to put their ideas that they have and actually make them create their ideas. Much like uh, a child taking a bunch of Legos and putting them together and making what they imagine come real. We use a updated version of, a, of an Erector set uh, from Vex Robotics, and uh, this is steel, aluminum, plastic gears, plastic chains, uh, servo motors, and we put them all together to create um, robotics that do things. A simple robotic robot that we start with, or I have the kids start with, is a kit. They follow the instructions, and they build a little robot that drives around much like a little RC car hmm. that can, has a little arm on it, can pick up and move things around. You're starting with a stock kit. Yes. Um, is there? Uh, I'm going to jump ahead only mm -hmm. because I can envision something way more exotic at some point down the line, where yes. the South High program. I, I can hear you being called on the carpet. The South High program is out of control because you guys are building robots that are two stories high, and you're sending them out shopping and for lunch, and you know. <laughs> Stepping on cars in the parking lot, that you know, that kind of thing. It, it, there are certainly there are resource restrictions. There, yes. you know, there are there are, are, are there guidelines okay, well to the we, program. Yes, when we compete every year, the REC Foundation is where we compete through. Uh, REC Foundation and the Vex Robotics Company uh, have a competition. They set out a certain ground rules as to what the competition is for that year and we build a robot to compete in that competition okay. and there is a very large book of rules that go with it every year right. uh, my students have to read the rules design the robot try to build it then update it fix it when they find a problem they have to use the engineering cycle to modify the, and redesign the robot by the time we get to competition we will probably have built the robot six to seven times hmm from the ground up and it's funny you mentioned how tall the robot was because this year's robot actually stood five foot four inches tall <laughs> it, it started at 18 inches tall and it actually expanded to five foot four had, so. uh, oh this is just fascinating as all get out to me so at the start of a school year well a couple of things very mm -hmm. basic things at the start of a school year and you're two years in now mm -hmm. uh, in being part of the program who are the kids? How, how do you how do you get the how how do kids get into the program? Uh, when I first started this, I actually pulled straight from from my uh, classes, my honors physics classes, hmm. and then they pulled in their friends, and it's kind of perpetuated from then. But what's interesting about our team is the fact that we have every type of student in the building. Uh, 
we have everything from captains of the football team hmm. all the way down to the kids that don't do any other sport or activity other than robotics. So we've got the whole gamut. We have chess team people. We have key club people. We have uh, academic team people that are on it. I mean, it's amazing. And we have from ninth graders to 12th graders. It's oh, no, the full, yeah. It's the full gamut. Right. Does it matter? No, it Do, doesn't matter. So, so there are no, there's no real stronger characteristic than not for kids who would be involved in this program. I think it's the desire. Mm. It's the desire to create something that isn't normal isn't conventional isn't a normal school project this is over and above the normal school day do you have limitations on the number of kids who can get involved in the program or i don't R- really yeah we actually have enough stuff to actually have three teams this year we uh participation limited us to two teams um, our teams can range from anywhere from three people to seven people depending on the drive and what the kids want to do right so a lot of it's directed by the children or by the kids themselves. Right. Is is the is this on you as far as uh, you know organizing the kids and the and the you know the practices and I mean it's all that's all you. Well, not all I mean of it. it's not I as ex- if you're it's not as if you're having meetings with school administration or are you over over how the program goes. The, no, I pretty much run the program, but I'm not alone. I have a co-advisor, which is Dan Litton, who mm-hmm. also runs sure. the media club yeah, I know Dan. at mm-hmm. South. And we actually co-advise this, but he likes to let me take the lead a lot, right. <laughs> um, which which is great. I, I, I enjoy it. Um, uh, I'm kind of stuck. What, what's the schedule over the year? I mean, when over you get the, the kids started, when you get the program oh, wow started at the beginning of a school year how does it what's the timeline and how it plays out well you know not only practices but then leading to is there okay. a certain part of the season where competitions rule well our our particular robot season it doesn't work like a normal school did season. you just call it robot season yeah i call is it, it okay. robot season okay. actually i just wanted okay just <laughs> wanted to check yeah, i call it that because um the actual robotic season according to vex actually starts at the end of the international competition which is being held in a month. So they will, at that point, introduce the new game. And when they introduce the new game, the robotics club and I sit down and figure out when to show up during the summer to design. <laughs> and they actually do show up. It's They work all the time. Right. It'll be like once a month over the summer. And then when school starts, uh, as long as we can work around sports schedules, because I work around with the coaches to make sure... Right. That all the all the kids get to do whatever they need to do, which limits our times to a lot of Saturdays, um, which the kids come in voluntarily. Um, I'm I'm there to help them out, and right. we work on the design together. I help them bring their ideas, uh, bring their ideas out, and try to find their creative side. But then I also have to teach them how the limitations of the mechanics. So I teach them mechanics and gear ratios and speeds, hmm. electronics, how to program. I, I try to teach them whatever they, whatever they want to learn, I will focus on. If you're just joining us, Don Custer is uh, handling our opening segment. He's the mentor and uh, coach, uh, co-advisor of the robotics team at South Hagerstown High School. Uh, and Amber Patterson is waiting in the wings to talk about virtual high school here in Washington County. Um, so we'll take a different turn here shortly, but uh, do you go in? So you go into the, the competition. You go in to competition. It's not like Destination Imagination, where the kids show up and they either build, they do what they don't. You're not handed the assignment or the mm. the comp, the game or whatever. We go in fully prepared to okay. compete with our robot. Uh, okay. Yeah. And so give us give us a, give us a flavor of competition. Well, competition is usually a ten to twelve hour day. Uh, the kids get up extremely early. Uh, right. uh, our last competition was the state competition in Baltimore. I had the kids at the school at 5 a.m. on a Saturday. Two-hour bus ride in, right. hour and a half setting up at location. Then it's a set of qualification matches. We had to play six of them out of the 80 that were there, 80 qualification matches. We Incredible. were one robot against 59 others. When you say against, what what does that what does that mean? 
I need to visualize this. It, it, <laughs> and this is open. I mean, this is yeah. this could be spectator sport, right? Yeah, I mean, it is. It's actually, yeah. it quite it, it is. Because um, we're all going next time. There's no question <laughs> about it. It's it's very hard to describe the actual event. It's almost one of those you have to experience to really understand it. It's it's a lot of round robin stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's almost like very close to watching the NBA playoffs because there's qualification rounds and then there's a tournament at the yeah, end okay. of the day. Right. So you can imagine an entire NBA season in in six hours. You have right. the robotics competition. Is it being judged or is it how, how is it scored? How is it judged? Well, like I said, we we play a game. The robots, uh, the goal for the whole season is to play a specific game. Okay. And along with that, there the kids are also judged on design, engineering, right. how much they they know. There are several awards that can be given out. So it, it's scored in a bunch of different ways. Right. And you guys are winning. We're I mean, not this doing is too bad. so we're talking to the the advisor, the co-advisor of the championship South Hagerstown High School robotics team. What, we're, what? we're doing okay. <laughs> Listen to you. Okay, Mr. Humble. Um, what, what, what did you win? I, folks who don't know. Um, last year we won the county competition. Right. Um, along with our partner teams. Um, the last year they also got the Excellence Award. Uh, this year they got – we didn't actually win the county competition. We were in the final – we were in the final matchup, right? Um, but what they get, we did get the sportsmanship award, which we thought was just about as good as winning. Right, that counts for a lot. I don't care what the competition is; that's for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, a lot of uh, boy, we can't escape this segment without a reference to uh, some partner support in a right. huge way. Do you want to? Why don't you do that? Well, this whole the whole robotics program is due to uh, Volvo, the the big truck company because they wanted to uh, look to the future in creating future engineers and a way to do this was through the robotics program and they were graciously gave us a grant the whole county Mm -hmm. to um, have robotics in the middle and high schools in the county I'd also like to thank Best Buy Best Buy Mm -hmm. gave South High a grant this year over and above the Volvo one, which allowed us to upgrade a lot of our materials to become more competitive. Right. That I, I don't think any the, the the level of detail to this. I mean, we hear about robotics activity in the county, but there would be no way for us to 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 know what you just told us coming in without some of this detail. That's it's got to be a blast. Oh, it's a lot of fun. I get really get to know the the kids really well, right. and most of them are in my classes too. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, can you can you peg kids for success just off ro- the robotics team? I, I, and I mean success in, in, in any way. Is, is there, yes. no matter what their background is, what their academic standing is, and you're saying they're coming from all corners of the school, mm-hmm. um, is, is there something different about these kids? I see a level of determination in these kids that I do see in other people in other ways but this one just it seems a little bit stronger and i it's hard to describe without right. seeing it it'll be fun to see if that translates then mm. you know i mean those kinds of characteristics always play out as you know as they get into college as they get into jobs and careers and things like that mm. you know those are the kind of things that that become valuable as they go man that's outstanding that's outstanding uh, let's uh, shift gears. Uh, we, we've been talking with Don Custer, who is the uh, mentor and coach of the South Hagerstown High School robotics team. Uh, we want to focus on also on the virtual high school. I'm, I'm calling it a project. Amber, you can correct me on that. Uh, we're talking about virtual high school in Washington County, um, which I don't even know what to do with this because, because there, there is none or there is. So What's going on with this whole thing, Amber? <laughs> That's a very fair question. Um, basically, what we're trying to do right now with this project is is take um, some pieces out of two of our, our, our classes that every kid in high school takes, English 9 and Algebra 1, and turn pieces of them into video games. 
Um, so, uh, you know, essentially we're trying to find things where, you know, it might be hard to understand reading something from a book. Like, for instance, if I'm going to go read Dr. King's um, I Have a Dream speech, you know, I could read that from a book, I could listen to it, you know, I, yeah, I might understand it to some extent by doing those things. But if I could go in as an avatar and stand in the crowd and look up at the steps and watch an avatar of Dr. King giving that actual speech, I'm going to understand it a great deal better, right? I'm not sure that is right. Well, to to me, it's not. So uh -huh. all of a sudden, you've created a skeptic here in the okay, opening uh, in the opening fair question enough. and answer. Why should I? God, I may not have a job by the end of the uh, afternoon here. <laughs> I'm going to take a shot at this. Why should I take this seriously? What? Why should Why should we? Why should we, as a set of listeners, take this seriously? Because you're talking about delivering education uh, 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 as a video game. Yeah, and you know, that's a really fair question, and I can see where there would be a lot of skepticism about it, because when we think about video games, we don't traditionally think about education. Right. Um, Dr. Wilcox came up with this idea a couple of years ago, and um, you know, he, he saw the value in it. And there's a couple of statistics that I, I can throw out there. Um, as far as kids up to 18 years old, 99% of boys and 94% of girls regularly play video games today. And the average young person spends approximately, in the United States at least, spends about 10,000 hours playing video games before they turn 21 years old. Which if you look at that versus the number of hours they spend in middle school and high school, it's almost the exact same number of hours. This is something that they're passionate about. It's something that kids love to do and they're doing it anyway. So why not put right. some education in, along with it? Um, you know, one of the things that we know about millennial students, you know, kids that are coming up through middle school and high school today is that um, they they really want choice in what the, what um, in what they're learning they really um, let's see gosh they uh, they want to be stretched by what they're doing they they want to do the sort, same sort of things that they're doing at home too they want technology mm. involved in what they're doing if you're just joining us today's show is sponsored by blackboard on a mission to reimagine education uh, we thank Blackboard for their sponsorship, not only today, but for the next series of shows, too. Uh, Amber Patterson is holding forth in this segment of our show today. It's called Lunchtime Live. We're here the third Thursday of the month. Uh, what, what is your charge specifically? I mean, what, you know, when, when that meeting occurred, where, okay, uh, Ms. Patterson, you're hired here's what we'd like you to do. What was that? Okay, that's that's a great question. Um, so basically they asked me to, to number one, um, get three different populations involved in this program. So first of all, we're creating opportunities right now in the development of this. Mm -hmm. So one, um, our lab is located in Western Heights Middle School. Right. So we're actually, we have during what they call their boomerang period, three days a week, um, we have middle school students who are coming in and helping conceptualize these ideas, um, you know, to make them make sure that they're actually fun. It's, it's you know, it's, it's something that they actually would want to do. Hmm. Um, also, our second population is uh, a group of students from Tech High and the computer game design and animation right. program. Um, there are eight of them currently, and, and maybe we'll be adding more as we go, um, who come over for half of their education week. So Monday, Wednesday, every other Friday, they're with me the entire day creating these games from scratch. And then we also have some teachers who are giving their, their time in, in the evenings to come over and help, you know, make sure that the education is actually a part of this and it's not just a video game, but is something that's going to actually enrich learning. Right. See, because I had um, this is enlightening for me. I had the I had the visual of you, you know, like in a in a hazy basement office somewhere, <laughs> you know, with with fumes coming out of beakers, and you're creating God knows what. But I mean, the kids the kids are the kids are involved now, obviously, yeah, quite actively. Definitely, definitely, yeah, and, and it's great. I mean, seeing um, you know the, the kids at Western Heights who come in, you know, even though I get an hour and a half with them every week, they're bringing so many wonderful and, and, and enlightening ideas to the table that even the high schoolers may not necessarily think of because you know younger hmm. kids are just so uninhibited. Um, and then the high schoolers themselves are just absolutely amazing. I can't say enough good things about them. I mean, they're coming in and they're creating this from the ground up. I mean, we basically started with a gray screen with a box in it, and now we have, you know, we're, the first thing that we're working on, on the English side is is Runnymede. So we're going to have King John there signing the Magna Carta, and avatars are going to be able to go out and talk to all the nobles to find out, you know, what it is that they're doing there and why they want the Magna Carta to be signed, right. and King John's side of it. Um, 
who will this who will who will we target with this ultimately you know when we've really got it in a form that we're going to i assume spread the wealth in some fashion yeah definitely yeah um, right now the the game plan is you know we're trying to pick out some of the better pieces no pun intended of course <laughs> fair enough uh, we're trying to pick out some of the better pieces of the curriculum that makes sense in video game form so mm. in english that's turning out to be more of simulations and on algebra it's turning out to be more of games to take some of the math out of it and a little bit more fun into it while you're learning math right. so once we get to the point where we, we have several of these done for English 9 and Algebra 1. We're going to start rolling these out into the classrooms. And it's not to say that they, you know, they won't still be having their regular classroom right. learning just like they do today. But every now and again, you know, maybe once every month, once every six weeks, there's going to be a video game that they're going to be able to play for a class period or maybe it's assigned to them as homework um, where they can go and, and do some extra learning through a video game. Is this very same thing happening or has happened elsewhere? I, in other jurisdictions around the country, around the world? Or well, you know, that's one of the most exciting things about this. You know, we've seen a couple of things that are similar in some ways, very few of them, but really as far as what we're doing specifically, we're the first. So we're, we're kind of trailblazing on this. How does that feel? It's pretty amazing. It's it's definitely a draw to, to get the students and the teachers to come and help with this uh, because we're doing something that really hasn't been done. And uh, everybody's very excited about that aspect. Of have you gotten certainly. any pushback either from the staff or f you know from parents? I, the kids, kids have to be jacked up about this. But <laughs> yeah. aside from that, is there any? And pushback might be a little strong, but well, how about elsewhere besides this announcer? In the level of skepticism has is there? Has been there? Is gone? You know, coming into this job, I, I anticipated that there would be some, but honestly, I haven't ran into any at this point. Um, everybody's been really willing to to welcome it with open arms thus far. Um, you know, th that may change as we get into rollout, but actually, I think once everybody gets to see how, what this actually looks like and what it'll look like in the schools, um, I think everybody, most people at least, will, will feel pretty good about right. it. Right. What's the schedule? When you say rollout, what, how does that work? Yeah, so we're still pretty early on in the process. We just started development in mid-February, so we don't have an exact schedule at this point. But I think that we're hoping by summer or at least by next fall to at least start piloting some of these games in the classrooms. And, and in what form would that, how would, how would that, how would that happen? How would you choose, you know, who's, who's up first? That's a good question. We, we haven't decided all the specifics surrounding that thus far, but I would imagine we'll probably start with some of the classrooms at Western Heights where it makes sense since that's our high school. Right. And then also the teachers who are helping with this, I would love to put it into their classrooms first since they help build it. So. Right. And just when you just middle school? Uh, uh, it is going to be for high school. So, okay. Yeah, okay. But the, the Algebra 1 class can be taught in both middle school or high school. Right. So. Um, how about the work just on the academic side, you know, with, with the folks from, uh, from instruction on the content? How do, you, how do you balance the content with the, you know, the, I mean, the visual and the tech part of it? Yeah, well, you know, I've got to get a lot, a lot of credit to the teachers who are helping with this. Uh, they've been the true visionaries of this uh, going into it. Um, on the English side of things, uh, the, the Mr. Farr from the Antietam Academy has been working on this for a couple of years now and um, has really put together you know, basically the, the bones of what the whole year is going to look like um, for English 9. And, and he's just done an amazing job of making sure that the education is absolutely there, but it's also fun. And so, you know, part of that is, is having the kids come and help us make it a little bit more fun. But for the most part, you know, it, the balance is already there. And, and the same on the, the algebra side. We have uh, Mr. Coe from Smithsburg High School and Mr. Dockery from Barbara Ingram um, that are both helping on that side. And it's, it's just amazing to see, you know, the things that we're doing. Are we at a place, this is one of those things, if, we, if we're first, First, uh, no matter what context you put that in, is there is there buzz yet to the point where uh, somebody from X Y Z jurisdiction, whether in the region or beyond, it, uh, do we, do we have a sense? Do you have any direct knowledge that we're being watched and or followed or, or engaged in any way? Where somebody says, "Okay, can you guys keep us updated on this because we've talked about this and we want to." You know, we want to dovetail off of what you guys are accomplishing, you know, mistakes that you're correcting, that sort of thing. 
You know, actually, as of yet, I, I haven't heard anything along those lines. Um, you know, I know that my predecessor um, actually had this program out in the newspaper a little bit. I think it was mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, there really hasn't been a, a lot of public knowledge of what right. we're doing yet. Um, but as we get closer to rollout, you know, come this summer and, and you know, or maybe the fall, um, hopefully we will see more of that. I would love to work with, with other jurisdictions. I, I, I realize districts, that's not so. the aim. Yeah. I, I mean, it's but, a program that's in-house, but I can't right. imagine with the... The, uh, the unique quality of this that we wouldn't get some attention, you know, first of all, just agree. in the, you know, in the education arena. But God, I mean, this, you know, this is one of those things that a, it, there's a great angle to this, as we like to call them. So right. uh, mistakes. Are there mistakes? Have there been mistakes? I, and whatever that term means. What, yeah. Well, you know, actually, um, every week with my high school interns, I, I sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, um, and, and, I, and the, one of the questions that I ask them is, what are we doing right and what are we doing wrong? And and every week I'm hearing a lot of, well, I think we're doing this right and this right and this right, right. but when it comes to what we're doing wrong, as of yet, um, I mean, sure, there have been a couple of small pitfalls here and there. We've retooled a couple of things after we've done it, but for the most part, I think we're going in, in a good unified direction, and, and things are going very well thus far. You, you haven't had to blow anything up, any particular their major direction no, in order to no. just shift gears completely. No, no, not not since I've come on board. We've just kind of been um, in lockstep, really, and right. moving towards the same same goal. Tell me, um, so we're on a Thursday, if you're listening to this live, um, what has happened? Tell me about this week, okay. this week of activity. All right. Yeah, so uh, both on Monday and Wednesday, I had uh, my high schoolers there for the their full academic day. Um, and during that time, we have a morning meeting. Uh, we talk through wh where we are, what things we got accomplished on the last day that we work together. Um, and then we talk about, you know, where are we going? What are the things that we need to do today? We split it up. And, you know, and out of all the things that we're doing, there's, there's a lot more to it than you might imagine. You know, with these high school kids, we're, you know, doing everything from concept consulting to um, actually storyboarding it and creating the actual art on paper to um, let's see gosh then we're actually creating um, 3D models of everything. We're animating 3D models. Right. We're, you know, putting in the computer code and programming to make it all work together. And then at the same time, we're still talking marketing too. You know, how are we going to get this out to the public? How do we want to present this to the public to, to make sure everybody understands what we're really doing? So. Wow, that's a that's that's way more that's way broader than I thought it was. I mean, it really that. Because that's the whole package. It is. It is. And, you know, it's going to be, I mean, obviously the, the end goal here is to get this out into the high schools. But for right. right now, we're already creating opportunities for these eight kids who are coming and working half of their school week. And for even the kids at Western Heights, the middle schoolers, are getting to come in for an hour and a half a week and, and help out. Right. When do, you, when, are you, when, are you, when do your updates, when do you have to make updates to your supervisors and or any others who are watching this project? Well, I talk to my direct supervisor a little bit more frequently, but my, my main charge is to meet um, with Dr. Wilcox and my supervisor, Jim Cords, uh, mm -hmm. once a month. Right. And so we talk through, you know, everything that's been going on, you know, the, the technology that we're using, technology that we're considering bringing in, and um, direction, and staff, and resources, and everything else. Right. It, uh, you're not really engaging either parents or, this is you and the kids, right? That's right. And, and other staff members in the, who have some angle on this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, ultimately, though... Although I can't imagine these kids aren't reflecting, you know, at home or with their peers or wherever it may be, this, this kind of activity, as unique as it is. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that they, they do talk about it and they they get to, you know, play with some of these things outside of school too. But for the most part, it's really just when they're in the room with me that we really right. sit down and make all of this work. Right. Excellent. Uh, we're I believe we're out of time here, so let's uh, – Let's wrap up. Today's show has been sponsored by Blackboard on a mission to reimagine education. Uh, today's guest, Amber Patterson, appreciate you coming over uh, just around the corner at Western Heights Middle School, uh, set up on the uh, virtual high school program and project as it unfolds in the early stages. And uh, Don Custer, thank you very much. Coming over from South Hagerstown High School, the mentor and coach for the robotics team there. Thank both of you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, the Lunchtime Live program on WJEJ is a uh, 
a partnership that plays out the third Thursday every month at this time. We also uh, replay at your leisure online a, a rebroadcast of it. Uh, you can dial it up at the school system website when we have it posted for you. So uh, we thank you all for listening. This is Will Kaufman. This is Lunchtime Live from Washington County Public Schools on WJEJ.